Welcome back, my name is Dustin. Today I'm going to show you how I turned that mess into this. Stick around and check it out. The fun begins. My first cut was a reference edge to make sure my next cuts are all square. I then move that little guy to that position and begin cutting my side panels. I then spent a few minutes making a whole bunch of layout lines, marking inside, outside, top, bottom. I then used some digital calipers and a center punch and marked where I wanted my holes to be. I clamped both side panels together and went to work on the drill press. This was a, a pretty challenging task for that little drill press. Slow and steady, and I got the holes in. It was cold out, so I figured why not play hockey. I celebrate here, but I missed. I got the side panels onto the router, and I started making dados. I dadoed out a groove for where the back panel is going to go, and also all the shelves. When it was all said and done, I was pretty happy. I did have to clean up a few of the dados with a chisel. I took a measurement or two, then went to work on the back panel, which I cut out of quarter inch sanded plywood. I'll take that fit any day. I guess I forgot to hit record there, but I got one of the shelves cut, and now I'm just doing a dry fit up so I can start making some measurements. I then cut the top shelf, and for inquiring minds, there's about an inch between the wood that I'm cutting and the table saw fins. Good thing my assembly table was there to stop me from tripping over my own feet. I'm doing another dry fit up, making sure everything's square, I then searched through my scrap wood pile and uh, found a piece that looks like it's going to work perfectly. You can see by my hand gesture there that perfectly was loosely said, but this is what I'm going to use for the back of the cabinet. The piece was a little rough, so I joined it and cut it down to size. Does it fit? Yes, it does. My tape measure's working great today. Here I am again, just checking for squareness because it's, well, that important. I then took some measurements and got to work on the remaining shelves. I rough cut them just a little long and then took a couple kerf cuts until they fit perfectly. They were just a little, well, they were a lot too wide, so I scribed some lines and cut them down to size on the table saw. Success. I sanded all the inside faces to 220 grit. I'm a master of janky setups, and that's just what I did here to round over the holes for the fly rod tubes. Time to get this baby together. I put a little glue here, a little glue there, there too, a little glue here, and um, glue everywhere. I guess I need more clamps, but anyways, I got it clamped up. I went to the other side and got the back slid in and the remaining shelves. I got some wood glue in there and slid those into place. I shot a few brad nails into each of the shelves. Using a damp cloth, I went over the entire shelf and cleaned all that friendly glue squeeze out off. I pre-drilled four holes and screwed the remaining back panel into place. Using some wood filler, I filled the holes that were left behind from the brad nailer. At this point, I figured uh, with all this leftover wood, I'd make a face frame. I wanted to make sure these were flat uh, for a perfect fit up, so I joined them before ripping them down to width on the table saw. I took some measurements, took my lumber over to the miter saw, and cut these babies down to size. Here I'm just pacing around the shop casually like a madman because I lost my glue. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Back in business. I used the combination of tight bond, a lot of tight bond, and brad nails and constructed the face frame. This is what I was left with. I decided to call it a night. Back to work the next afternoon, I started to make the cabinet door. Took some measurements, then back to the table saw to cut everything down to size. This was pretty quick and easy. I decided to use pocket holes to hold the frame together. See? Pocket holes. It is now time to glue and screw. I used clamps to make sure I wouldn't get a wonky joint when I screwed it together. And then I screwed it together. My tape measure is still working. I love it when things just fit together. Another one of my janky setups. I couldn't find my quarter inch rabbiting bit, so I used the router with an edge guide and a straight cut bit and put a rabbit into my cabinet door. I then used a mallet and a chisel to square the edges. And if you're interested, I have a video on how I made that very mallet, so check it out. Ooh, pretty. I then took a measurement and went back to the table saw where I cut some more quarter inch plywood down to size. I then used the miter saw to cut the panel to its final dimension. And there you go, I'll take it. I then used a center punch and marked out some holes for some hinges. I pre-drilled the hardware holes and then got everything attached. Uh, I'm super happy. I like it. I can't wait to see it finished and hanging on my wall. Uh, I haven't installed the back panel here. I got some uh, some plans for that. Uh, so that's going to be installed last. 
Uh, what I'm going to do now, off camera, nobody wants to see that, I'm going to get this thing sanded and uh, probably just spray a coat of lacquer on it. Nothing too fancy. It's just pine. Well, I like this. Um, probably said it earlier, but it's going to go really good in my uh, in my gear room. So we hope to, uh, I hope to get the, the pattern burned into this tonight. My girlfriend's going to do it for me. She's a great artist. Uh, so we'll bring you back tomorrow, hopefully when I get it installed and hung up in my in my gear room. And uh, I am super happy with this. I think it turned out beautiful and it's just going to complement the piece so well. I'm going to get some lacquer on it, probably two coats. Then I'll brad nail it into the, into the little cabinet face there. Give you one final look at the project. Then I'm going to go find somewhere in my gear room to put this thing.